Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and this is going to be a buyer's guide to an AMD gaming rig. Now this particular system isn't exactly super high-end, most expensive parts, but it's not exactly super cheap and budget parts. Instead, it's kind of a mid-range of about, oh, $800 to $1,000, depending on the configurations here. So I'm gonna go through the parts here, what I would choose to build an AMD gaming rig, now for those of you who are hardcore Intel fans, I am an Intel fan as well. My main system that I use here at home for both gaming and uh, video editing is my Intel system, but not everybody needs to transcode or edit video um, and they just wanna have a gaming rig that's you know more bang for the buck. And so there's uh, some parts here that you can get that are cheaper than the Intel parts and you can save that money and put that into a better graphics card that's gonna be purely for the benefit of running games, all right? So um, just to let you know, I'm kind of in the process right now of shooting and recording um, a builder's guide, so to speak, uh, of an AMD uh, LAN party rig and my enthusiast machine that I got in pieces over there. So that's gonna that's on the on the lineup uh, coming out soon as soon as I finish shooting and editing all that stuff. And uh, let me get my camera situated here. Sorry. All right. So um, first things first, I'm gonna talk about the parts here and uh, starting with the most expensive to the least expensive, and uh, we're gonna go through and see how much all this stuff costs. All right. Um, starting with our graphics card here. So the graphics card I'm going with is the 7870 gigahertz edition and this is a Sapphire Radeon card and it's uh, 250 bucks here on Amazon. It's a great card. Um, if you're only gonna be doing a single monitor 1920 by 1080 or 1920 by 1200, like a big 24 inch monitor with high resolution, uh, this particular card is great. You can do iFinity and do triple monitors, um, but you know, you'll have some problems if you want to run high-end games on Ultra in iFinity. It's going to crash it or it's not going to run that well. But just a single monitor, this card will be able to handle many games on, on Ultra settings at about 40 to 50, maybe even 60 uh, frames per second, but around 45 to 50 or 55 that those are accept acceptable uh, frame rates when running things at ultra right and so the motherboard I'll be using is uh, not exactly the budget ones and it's kind of almost on the enthusiast high-end uh, motherboards uh, by gigabyte and it's using the 990 FX which is kind of their flagship uh, top-end um, uh, chipsets from AMD and so this board has a lot of the the amenities or the advanced features like SATA 6 ports uh, SATA 6 gigabit ports and it has all the ports on there are SATA 6 gigabits which is really great also has USB 3.0 um, so that's the motherboard there and it's only $135 and so that's going to be paired up with an AMD FX6100 six cores, and this is 120 bucks. Now, the competitively, the AM or the Intel side of things for a Core i5 3570K, that's like about 220 ish. I mean, I seen it for 200 bucks, um, and that. CPU will blow this CPU out of the water in terms of like transcoding video editing stuff like that But for gaming, you know most games don't really use more than quad core uh, Processing power so this is going to be more than enough um, You could probably also get away with like the FX 4100 if you wanted to save some some extra dough, but I think it's only like a $20 difference um, so to be on the safe side the 6100 six core processor is going to be uh, great for gaming. And so uh, it could save you up to $100 uh, versus the uh, Core i5 um, counterpart uh, from Intel. All right, so the case here that I have is the uh, CM Storm Scout 2. And this is more of a LAN party kind of rig because it's got this handle up on top here. 
and uh, but I really like this case because it's it's sleek it's got the nice window on the side it's got plenty of uh, ventilation for uh, adding more fans and stuff and it has kind of like a red lighting uh, kind of scheme to it and AMD is the red and black kind of kind of colors and this kind of makes it look look more nicer and and uh, more themed to uh, AMD and uh, as an alternative to this particular case if you don't want to shell out a hundred bucks another case that I do recommend is this uh, Cooler Master 692 Advance great case a lot of room great cable management and uh, it's uh, $85 which is actually $25 or $20 cheaper or $15 sorry $15 cheaper than this Cooler Master case it does have a blue fan in there um, you can change it to a red fan so it matches all of your stuff or whatever if you want um, but this is a really great case to have uh, but this case is new it's got the handle on top you can take your system around uh, which is also great alright so moving on to the hard drive here and this is a standard one terabyte hard drive it is uh, SATA 6 gigabits although I doubt if it will actually saturate or transfer data at that speed but um, alternatively if you don't need so much as all this space or if you want to get this and another hard drive or if you want to just get a solid state drive which is a lot faster you can get a solid state drive but the thing is a solid state drive will just load things faster it doesn't necessarily make games run faster you don't necessarily you're not gonna get so much as better frame rates you know it's not gonna bump it up or anything like that but it will load games faster almost twice as fast so if you want like your operating system to boot really fast and you want your games to boot really fast because you just hate waiting for games to load then yeah this uh, you can get a solid state drive for example this OCZ 128 Vertex 4 um, and this will go nicely with that SATA 6 ports on the motherboard that I told you about so for a hundred bucks you can get this um, and you can get it in conjunction with that's with this regular spindle hard drive uh, but you don't necessarily have to this will fit your operating system a few of your games and a couple applications like office and stuff and uh, That could be your boot drive there, and that's it's really fast right um, So yeah, that's the hard drive. That's the other alternative that you can get moving on to the power supply now This particular power supply is enough for this all of this all of these parts here in this machine the 600 watt modular I really like modular is because it just you only use the cables that you need uh, to power your devices and 600 watts here is enough for this machine but for this particular graphics card if you get another graphics card two of these then you'll have two of these and you uh, crossfire them meaning you put them both together and they're both you know using the power of two graphics card uh, this 600 watts isn't going to be enough right so if you get another one of these graphics card down the line uh, or maybe you won't maybe you'll be happy with just one graphics card then this uh, particular power supply is enough but if you get two graphics cards you're gonna want at least a 750 watt power supply and how did I come to uh, know all of this well uh, Newegg here it's a great website they have a power supply calculator and you just type in I'll say regular motherboard you just punch in what components you have so we have the 7870 just one of them and then we have memory here we have 8 gigs of DDR3 optical drive is regular DVD drive and your hard drive is a spindle hard drive when you hit calculate here it tells you how much wattage your power supply should be all right, so let's say let's bump this up to two graphics cards, right? And we'll calculate 691 is what you're going to end up needing. So a 750 watt power supply is what you want, or 700 watt, but that's kind of pushing it because maybe later on you add another hard drive. And so you're going to need at least 711. So 750 or an 850 graphics card is what you're going to need here. And so um, that's a great website for that. 
and so that's why I'm just only going with this if you get a 750 watt I mean this is only $67 750 watts gonna be like a hundred to hundred and twenty dollars it's a significant jump I'm trying to keep the prices down right now right so moving on to the memory this is a, a memory kit that's made in conjunction with Patriot memory so it's actually Patriot memory but AMD is kind of uh, branded this memory as uh, a memory kit that works very well with AMD uh, CPUs. So this particular kit um, is the AMD Memory Performance Edition. It's eight gigs here for fifty-three bucks. It's a pretty good price, and for gaming, eight gigs is enough. You can get another pair of these and make sixteen gigs, and gaming for that purposes should be more than enough, right? and uh, our CPU cooler that we're going to use even though this this particular CPU here this box comes with a fan I'm actually going to throw on there an aftermarket fan and so to keep the price down again I'm using Cooler Master Hyper 212 you can add another fan here to make it push-pull configuration which is really great and uh, to finish it off is our uh, Samsung just some cheap DVD drive just for you to install um, some games if you still have games that are on uh, optical drive or that require discs and stuff like that and so let me go through and see what our total is right and let me add all of this up so I tend to just round things out to the nearest dollar and Let's see what do we got here so far oops oh man Psh. demo fail All right let's start that again dang it all right 21 30 54, 67, 81, 102, one, oops, 120, 135, and 250. Right, 860 bucks, under a thousand dollars or under nine hundred dollars, which isn't bad. Again, you could, um, sort of uh, skimp and save a little bit or you might end up spending a little bit more but if your budget is around a thousand bucks then this particular system uh, would be great for you to build for those of you um, who are interested in building systems uh, or is going to be building a system soon this is kind of uh, hopefully this uh, helps you out kind of gives you an idea of uh, what you might want to get but uh, for those of you hardcore intel fans Fear not, I'm also going to be making another video with Intel parts uh, that I would choose uh, for those of you who just want to go with Intel and NVIDIA, right? And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the whole physics engine in the NVIDIA and Intel video uh, that I'll make coming out soon, maybe in a few days. But uh, I got to get back to shooting and recording these uh, builder guides here. So hopefully that uh, is somewhat entertaining or and or informative for you links to all of these parts and the power supply recommendation link all in the description as always as usual and so thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later